here we are with the movie segment of Nerd Bar Live this week. And as you may have guessed, we're going to be talking about this Serenity. hat. <laughs> Serenity. That's right. We, we'll we talk about earlier or later in the show, uh, Firefly, the TV show, which spun off the movie Serenity, which was the name of the spaceship that they flew around in on the show. Uh, and, it, and it kills some fan favorite characters, too. Yeah, well, somebody had to go. I, I wonder if they drew lots when they were writing the script. <laughs> Like everyone, short straw has to die. I don't know. There's there's been a lot of speculation as to how Whedon chose who to take out when he wrote the script, but um, you know, some people got really mad. Some people didn't care. Uh, but they took out some two major major care. characters. So well, if you've watched the TV show and you haven't seen the movie, you need to see the movie because it'll help make the show make a little more sense as to what was kind of going on the whole time in the background. Does a really good job of explaining all of River's madness. Yes. That's, However, I think that's part of the reason they even did the movie was because that was a big question. If you haven't seen the TV show or the movie, you can't watch the movie first. It will make no sense whatsoever. It'll be interesting to watch for action and entertainment, but you won't understand anything that's going on. Because the movie kind of starts with the assumption that you've seen the TV show, and you know who all these people are, and you know what's going on with them. Uh, because I made that mistake. I watched the movie first, and I was like, what is all this about? I did the same thing. And then I watched the TV show, and I was like, oh, now the movie makes sense. I'll have to go watch the movie But again. I will say, if you watch the movie first, you will be driven to watch the TV show afterwards. Probably so, so yes. And then people come back from the dead if now, you watch it out of order. Now, you watched it in the right order. I did watch it in the right order. From beginning to end. And if you watch it in the correct order, then you get attached to people, and then you get really, really mad when they die. When they die. Well, you know, it's TV. Could be worse. It could be Game of Thrones. Now, this TV, sh this movie came about because of huge fan outcry to continue give the TV more. show. Right, right. Give us more. I think there was a big online movement with that sure, yeah there still is really to bring the series back and the uh, fans of the show they, they create fan clubs called the brown coats now brown coats yes they have chapters in every state i believe right yeah there's brown coats so look out for people in, in brown fact coats. if you're watching from the wilmington area you have a brown coats bar In Wilmington, yeah, North Carolina, right up the road. Huh? Is it full of Firefly fans, or yeah. they do uh, they do viewing nights and all kinds of special events? Not to be confused with the brown shirts, the former you know world. Uh, no, not the Germany. Same. Not the same. <laughs> brown coats are the good guys. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure when you send people to a brown coat bar, <laughs> they know what they're getting into. Uh, so the movie, uh, the Alliance still pursuing River because she's uh, some kind of crazy psychic abilities. Uh, Mal and the crew are now attached to her and they want to protect her uh, and they want to figure out why she's acting the way she is and, the, and they kind of figure out why the Reavers exist because you never really know how or why they exist. Yeah, they're just yeah, there. They're just like this eternal boogeyman. On they're the just like space zombies kind of. You actually get to see a Reaver. <laughs> right, because they're space zombies with ships. Um, and so that all kind of gets tied together, but then it kind of ends with, well, now where do you go? Uh, which we've talked about in the past is continuing on in, in the comic, in yeah. the comic book. Uh, so you can go to your local comic shop and pick up the, is it called Serenity? Yes, the newest series is actually the continuation of the story. Um, they are following in the footsteps of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series that came before that, ironically also Joss Whedon and continuing the storyline through the comic. So watching the comic, or reading the comic now would be like watching the next season of the TV show. Pretty cool, so you want it to check those cool. out too. So, if you want to understand when we make Firefly references, you need to check out this movie as well, so you can kind of bring the whole thing home together. And before we sign off on the movie segment, Steve, when you grab one end of this hat, it's just something we've been got to do and get this on air. And that'll wrap it up for this week of Nerd Bar Live on the movies. We'll see you next week.
What are you, some kind of nerd? When I am in Myrtle Beach, I hang out with my fellow nerds at Nerd Bar on Main Street. On Thursdays, I enjoy the board games and the beer nights before I get to the chopper. Yeah. Go to Facebook forward slash Nerd Bar One for more info. I'll be back. And here we are with this week's gaming segment of Nerd Bar Live. If you haven't guessed it yet, this week, Steve, we have a theme running. More Firefly. More Firefly. Now, we have two different games here, both Firefly. Uh, one is just a pure card game. You can check that out right there in all its awesomeness. There's the bags. So you can see all the goodies that come inside this box. Now, this game is only $25. You have everything you need to play. And uh, you pretty much what run missions and yeah, it's, win it's coins. Kind of like playing the TV show. It's like being on the TV show with yeah. a card game. Trying to, to find cargos and and missions to run and make money and just scrape around to survive and not get caught in the process. Now this is a little bit different. That's for the board game. That's the that's the larger, more complex version, where you get a ship, you get a crew. Um, you bid on jobs. Uh, I think there are a lot of ways to get in trouble. <laughs> it's it's also very much like the TV show and the movie where the you know you're constantly trying to dodge the law and and make a living and and try to keep your ship in the air. Now I I remember playing this a little bit, and uh, you get the choice of picking a legal cargo transport for a little bit of money, or a questionable. Mm -hmm. cargo for a lot of money uh, but when you take the questionable ones if the alliance during the game stops you you could lose everything exactly uh, you can upgrade your ship the quality of the engines other stats like that upgrade your crew it all costs money and uh, I guess the goal is to end the game with the most money yeah I think the person that ends Pretty the game with the game. most boys wins <laughs> Wins the whole very American sounding kind of game. Kind of is, isn't it? Anyway, so it's like Space Monopoly on crack. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen the Reavers in the game yet, but I'm sure they're going to be introduced. Well, in. They are putting out up updates Expansion for the pack. game yes. all the time with new cards, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of surprises in there. Right, new missions and expansion packs are only thirteen dollars. That's pretty awesome. So these are just two games that we know of uh, centered around the Fly Firefly universe, or as they call it, the verse. The verse. Uh, so fans of the show, fans of the movie, fans of the comics, you need to be fans of the game and get into some of this gaming. So come on down to Nerd Bar and play some with us. We'll see you next time. with this week's TV segment of Nerd Bar Live. We've got Sarah on the couch wearing some awesome headgear. And we have Steve here as well. <laughs> the headgear is by no accident because this week we're talking about a show that's no longer on TV and sadly should be. Firefly. Firefly. If you haven't seen it, you gotta Netflix it, go buy the DVDs, you have to watch it. But we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Okay, first off, how many episodes did they make? 
I think there's 13. Thirteenth. We'll fact check that and make fun of ourselves down below. Uh, this was a who made it? Who's the director? Joss Whedon made this. His Theory. probably his best ever, right? I would I would qual I would qualify that as one of his best series. I mean, I'm not a big Buffy fan like everybody else, but. Uh, you know, it's a space opera. It's Cowboys in Space. Cowboys in Space. It's like if Indiana Jones was just a... Indiana Jones, listen to me. Harrison <laughs> Ford. If Harrison Ford as Han Solo was a little more Western and I, had his I own feel, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this and would be it. randomly punch people all the time. Well, That's, who would? He might have randomly punched a few people. I don't... So, um... Han Solo's kind of punchy. Right. It's, it's, it's a great space opera, space Western show that the fans cried for them to bring back josh and the networks didn't then i believe the fans like clamored for a movie which we'll be talking about later and <laughs> finally they they made a movie based on just the overwhelming fan outcry for just more of firefly sure you know he didn't I don't think they really realized the series was not going to get continued, so they didn't wrap up a lot of storyline. And sadly, they still didn't wrap up a lot of storyline in the movie. But they have in the followed in the footsteps of Buffy and gone on and started to wrap up some of the storyline in the new comic books. The comic books, which we talked about before, Firefly yes. the comic book. Which extends the TV story. Right. Extends the movie story. <laughs> And now, now tell me what what what's the headgear? Why is this important well, to the show? This is a hat that Jane gets one of the main characters from his mom, and it's adorable. Notice she said his mom, yes. but his name is Jane. Jane is a lady, a lady's name, but he's actually a man. And and he's big, Jane, the hero yeah. of Canton. He's he's the muscle of the group. Right, right. He's the big kind of oaf, too, sometimes. He's the enforcer. But he loves his, his hat. And his mom. He loves his mom. Yes, when he puts it on, he, he feels it makes him look quite distinguished. Yes. And then he wears it for the rest and of the And then he beats you up. <laughs> for the rest of the While episode. he's wearing the hat. Well, uh, so the ship is called that they're flying around in. The Serenity. The Serenity. And it's a, a Firefly, Firefly class of ship. That's where we get the name of the show. <laughs> Uh, there's the bad guys, which are the government, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the government, but it's got kind of a really weird corporate feel to it. So yeah, yeah. The yeah. alliance are the bad guys. So, and the uh, the cast of Serenity just fly around and kind of run uh, smuggling missions and things like that, and trying to just be criminals, but always end up doing good in the process because they're good people. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a Robin Hood feel to it, and I I like that. I think that gives it. Uh, it gives it a lot more depth than just a regular old space right. story. Nathan Fillion is kind of the lead role. He's the captain of the ship, whose name is Mal. 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 Right, Mal. Uh, and he's hilarious in almost everything he does. Uh, who else is in the cast? We have Morena Baccarin playing the vamp. Um. Uh, Summer Glau. Summer Glau. Yeah, she plays a messed up character. She's got issues. Less than that. Lots of great cast, great story. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you shame on you. Go see it. It's an amazing series. Yes. Uh, check it out. You'll, we'll be talking about this on Nerd Bar Live forever, so you might as well get caught up and know what we're talking about. We'll see you next time. Hello fellow nerds! If you are in Myrtle Beach, you need to check out XCON Comics on Main Street. It is the heart of the beach. Inside, you will find Nerd Bar, a new concept in nerdy entertainment. XCON Comics is the home of XCON, one of the fastest growing comic cons and the biggest in South Carolina. Whether it's comics, games, art, movies, or just something truly unique, XCON Comics and Nerd Bar is the home of what is cool in Myrtle Beach.
Check out facebook.com slash nerdbar1 for more information. And remember, hot, hot chicks love, love comics too. too. Here we are with this week's event segment to Nerd Bar Live, and coming up is Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the big one for the Carolinas. I miss you, I yes, it's, uh, this is very comic book oriented. Right? This one's been going on for, uh, what, 25, 30 years? Yeah. Yeah, it's a kind of a big deal. They get a lot of people there, about 20,000 people. Or more. That's he's really expanded in the last couple of years, yeah. so it's getting bigger. And it's it is strictly comic books. It's you're not gonna go there and meet movie stars. Yeah, it's not very pop culture. You're not he's, gonna meet horror fans. He, he started off with the comic theme, and he's really stuck to his guns all these years. So and it's comic books. So we're gonna have a booth there. So if you're in the Charlotte area or heading to the Charlotte area, you need to come find us, and we'll tell you all about Nerd Bar and what's going on with XCon and XCon Comics, and we'll yeah. even have some stuff for sale like these nifty T-shirts. Uh, also, in this week's segment, uh, events, we're going to show you some more panels from this past XCon because there's so many of them and they're so awesome. So stay tuned and watch a few of these. And we'll see you next time. Uh, it doesn't really matter though, he was eating somebody. Now, do you remember what caused that? It's been bath salts. Yeah, they've been down on bath salts. Now, some of y'all have probably gone to Walmart and bought bath salts before, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind, right? I hate it when they name bad things after normal things because I get questions from my mom and grandparents and people like that, like freaking out because I've got this stuff in my bathroom and I've used it before. I'm going to eat your dad at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I worked on the ambulance, I get questions like that all the time from family. You know, is this going to make me crazy? Um, so, yeah, no flesh in the stomach, but yeah, you still eat somebody, so I'd say still bad. What happens if you add contagious to that? In the, you know, contagious plus crazy, and you got zombies. Bath salts. <laughs> Who would have thought they were so dangerous? Now, here's what I think is going to cause the zombie thing. Can anybody tell me what germ that is? Rabies. Oh, rabies. Yes, rabies. Now, who wants a dog? <laughs> rabies. Now, Cujo was the, uh, the villain of the movie, but who was really the villain? That rabbit. Yeah, the rabbit, he chased the rabbit into the little, the little back, not the, not the back cave, but a little back cave. Chased the rabbit into a hole in the back, then he on the nose, right? Next thing you know, this big, lovable dog just wanted to eat people. There he is, covered in somebody else's blood. All right, so rabies. General weakness, discomfort, fever, or headache. That sounds like anything, right? Discomfort, prickling, or itching sensation at the site of the bite. Now, it's possible you can have that first set of symptoms, feel a little tired. The second set of symptoms, attribute that to a mosquito bite and not realize you've got something serious. Eight hours later, you're on an airplane in Dubai or China or Australia or England or anywhere. Progressing within days to symptoms of cerebral dysfunction, that could be normal, right? Cerebral dysfunction, this is a little crazy. <coughs> Anxiety, confusion, agitation. Still, perfectly normal symptoms. This is all rabies. As it progresses, delirium, abnormal behavior, hallucinations, and insomnia. The rabies virus is transmitted through saliva or brain or nervous system tissue. You can only get rabies by coming in contact with these specific bodily excretions and tissues. Now, so what if you started mixing swine flu and rabies and all this other stuff? A chance it can mutate even more and cause something that would create zombie-like conditions. If people started getting some type of a mutated strain of rabies to the point where it overwhelmed the hospital and the jails and all the places where we're normally lock people up at, what's going to happen to us? Usually get rabies from the bite of a rabbit animal. You know, something bites you. It's also possible, now I want you to understand that it's quite rare that people may get rabies if infectious material from the rabbit animal, such as saliva, gets directly into their eyes, nose, mouth, or a wound. In other words, usually from a bite. That's how so much of it gets into the skin. But it's also possible 
you know, but quite rare. That an animal could spit on you or uh, lick you or anything like that, and you get rabies from that. Uh, the quote from that book, survival is the key to a key word to remember. Not victory, not conquest, just survival. Just stay alive. You're not trying to win and become the emperor, or you might be. But uh, most of us aren't trying to become the new emperor of the world, and so we just want to survive and get by. What are you, some kind of nerd? When I am in Myrtle Beach, I hang out with my fellow nerds at Nerd Bar on Main Street. On Thursdays, I enjoy the board games and the beer nights before I get to the chopper. Yeah. Go to Facebook forward slash Nerd Bar One for more info. I'll be back. In this week's comic corner, we have Shop Girl Sarah here with us again because she reads a lot of comic books. Steve, like every week, what do you have on the shelf for us today? Well, I have a new Warren Ellis product. Warren Ellis, good oh, writer. The Trees. The Trees. I've read this one. You've read this one too, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. Sarah, have you read this one? I just briefly flipped through it so I could talk about something. So you know all about it. Yes. Um, the trees are, so far, these big alien pylons that are, what, I don't know, 400 stories tall or more? Yeah, they're like out into the atmosphere tall. And they just appear all over the world, and uh, the world kind of just continues to go on as if they're not there because they can't communicate with them, they can't get into them, they can't destroy them. So society has to go on. They kind of just become part of. It's just this weird alien life, thing that's man. all over the planet. Who wreaks havoc? It, they wreak havoc every now and again, and we're trying to figure out what they are. This is only the first issue, so you still have a chance to jump on this crazy roller coaster before we even know what it is we're reading. But knowing Warren Ellis, it's going to be pretty amazing. And I would keep an eye out on this one too because. Um, they are in talks for maybe making a TV series out of it. Already in talks for a TV series. Every comic book is in talks for a TV series. That's that means you need to buy them, board and bag them, sit on them with your fingers crossed because it could be worth some money. So what else do we have this week? Well, we have two weeks worth of the new bombshell variants for all of the DC titles for this month. All of the DC titles this month yes. are having bombshell variant covers. Yes, they all have these great... Sort of pin -up 1940s art. pin up art bomber girls as uh, as the cover instead of just well they they come out with regular covers too these are the variant covers these are an additional cover these are the ones you're going to want to find because they're going to be the ones that are worth some money yeah, and they're so just cool scrolling through those and Sarah you do some cosplaying sometimes have you ever done any bombshell cosplay no any pin up I have cosplay? not well looking at these covers I can see some in your near future <laughs> these are fantastic these were. Um, they're not going to be as available as the regular cover, so you definitely want to uh, grab these up if you can find them. We are going to have some complete sets of these available at the end of the month when they've all come out. Uh, I think this is going to be a great collectible to have and put aside. Yeah. Plus, anybody who's really see into those for a minute. bomber art or rockabilly type artwork, I think these will be great. So we're going to have a couple of co complete sets. Yes. That's going to be big money, I'm sure. Um, you know, we've done all the hard work. We're going to keep it, it reasonable for the collectors, but I also want to um, make sure that if you're buying a complete set that it was worth it. Oh, look at that. Poison Ivy's got Valentine's Day hard oh, on yeah. the calendar. They're great covers. The artwork's amazing. Um, they, they really are. These are really awesome. Yeah, I think they're fantastic. They're and really I, think, I think we should get Sarah... Shop Girl Sarah should be wearing that next next show. What do you guys think? New cosplay? Yep. Email us. Let us know. Well, I think that should wrap up this week's Comet Corner. We'll see you next week. Hey, buddy. How are you? <laughs> We're good. We're talking about you right now, and you got a lot of fans out here, so I said, let's see if we'll pick up the phone and say hi real quick. Hold on, Sarah. Put it down. All right, we got Jason. Everyone say hi to Jason. <laughs> We're talking about who we'd rather we 
Stay tuned for more Nerd Live!